All right, I'd like to call to order the Finance Commission meeting of Thursday, March 14th, 2024. Welcome. Um, first order of business is um, meeting minutes for approval from our March 7th meeting. We also had minutes from our um, March 12th meeting. Mm -hmm. um, is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve the minutes from the March 7th meeting. I did not read it in March okay, 12th meeting. Okay, that's fine. Meetings. Okay, uh, second. All right. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. For March, March 7th, we'll do March 12th and 14th at on the 27th. Okay. Next item on the agenda is Blue Hills. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, can you introduce yourselves and um, then you guys can get started. Great. Well, I'm Kevin Connolly. I've been the Norwood representative for Blue Hills since 1992. So, with that, on my right, your left, mm -hmm. Jill Rossetti, mm -hmm. the superintendent director, and the next Jill is Jill Brilliant. Brz <laughs> yes, yeah. and she is a business manager. Okay. Yes. And I will turn the show over to one of the two Jills <laughs> right now. Thank you, Mr. Conley. Good evening, and thank Good evening. you for allowing us the opportunity to present our proposed budget for fiscal year 2025. Ms. Brilliant and I have dedicated ourselves to building a budget that's fiscally responsible and sustainable. We are acutely aware of the financial challenges facing our towns, including Norwood. Our goal has been not only to address the educational requirements of the Blue Hills community, but also to safeguard the long-term financial health and accountability of your town. So with the collaboration of district leaders, we have established specific goals for our school, which are detailed on the 2025 budget goals slide in your packet. While I won't read each one individually due to time constraints, it's important, it's important to note that we allocate resources to support the achievement of a financial goal, a school building goal, a teaching and learning goal, admissions, recruitment, and retention, and community relations and culture. On the next slide are 2025 budget priorities, which we refer, refer to as the three R's, responsible, realistic, and responsive. Next is our budget timeline, and right now we are in the lower left quadrant of request and review. We engaged um, with our school committee at budget meetings, including voting and approving our budget through a subcommittee and the full committee, as well as holding discussions with town leaders, which we're presently doing, and we have our budget hearing next week okay. on Tuesday the 19th. Now I'm gonna turn it over, the budget worksheet, to Jill. So on this slide, this is our FY25 proposed budget. Um, the total budget uh, operating in capital Debt service and stabilization funding is $26,581,424. This represents a 5.78% increase over FY24. Um, we'll get more into the specifics of this at the end um, of our presentation, but I just wanted to highlight at the top um, the operating budget is $24,102,207, and then um, the MSBA renovation that you had voted um, is $2.2 but then there's um, a stabilization fund and the OPEB fund, which is going to be um, paid from our E&D, which is essentially the free cash mm -hmm. same. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that, um, and then we can get into more of the specifics at the end of the slides uh, presentation. Thanks, Jim. Our expense drivers on the next slide for FY25 include inflation. We are currently negotiating with all our bargaining units and fixed cost increase and long-term debt principal and interest for the MSBA um, renovation project. How we create our budget on the next um, slide. As you know, creating a budget is a collaborative e effort and we start working with our teachers, department heads, our, our leadership team, and then we end up working with all of our stakeholders to make informed um, decisions, including school council, Jill presents to them so they get input on that, and then we bring it to the school committee and out to the town. So where our funding comes from, on the next slide, 
it comes from various sources, including Chapter 70, our required local contribution, capital assessment, transportation, reimbursement, and our E&D, our excess and deficiency fund, which, as Jill stated, is just like um, your town's free cash. And I'm going to turn it back over to Jill. Sure. So this is our budget request breakdown. <coughs> and, um, it's broken out from the top with just, just salary only accounts. Um, which uh, is a total of $13,794,182, which is a 2.19% over 24. And then underneath is just our expense accounts, non-salary. So it's everything else um, that supports uh, our schools. Um, in our school, I'm sorry. And that comes to $12,787,242. These are broken out by um, DESE functionality codes. Um, and I can get into them in, um, in the next couple of slides um, when we talk about the salary, individual, and then non-expensive mm -hmm. salary. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned, our salary accounts um, totaled the 13 million plus. Um, it's broken out by uh, the 1,000 series, which is your district leadership, so that's your superintendent, business manager, dis uh, school committee. Um, then your uh, 2000 series is instructional. That is everything from teachers, parents, adjustment counselors, anything that you can think of for instruction, that is for um, the 2000 series. The 3000 series is uh, student services. This includes your mental health services, uh, transportation, food service, um, nursing, and other student activities uh, that, uh, for salary for that. And last is the operations and maintenance series, which is 4000, and that is your custodial grounds maintenance, building, and security. Okay. So this budget um, was built uh, without the full knowledge of contractual salary increases for 2025. Um, our contracts for all bargaining units are not settled. So should the district fail to negotiate contracts that fit into the budget assessments voted and approved by member towns, the committee will have to find ways to fund the contracts um, without changing the bottom line or um, member town assessments. Below is um, just a summary of the district staffing plan, FTEs for 25, and it is noted that we, um, there's a reduction of three, and that is because um, we are closing the post-secondary LPN program for FY25, um, but this does not reduce our salary expenses as they were paid from their own fund, so okay. it doesn't reduce the operating costs. And uh, what's LPN? It's an adult day program that we have had since 1995. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was one of the four programs that we incorporated when the school department of Norwood closed the Peabody mm -hmm. back in the day. I think it was 1989. Mm -hmm. And we incorporated LPN, cosmetology, culinary arts and nursing and other and early mm -hmm. childhood education. Okay. okay. So on the next slides, I will just go through by series and I'll highlight any major changes um, okay. or significant reductions. So for the 1,000 salary account, um, no major changes. The increase is due to estimated contractual obligations. The 2000 salary account, major changes. The only thing that um, was significant was the substitute line was increased, and this is due to anticipated contractual obligations and absences. So we had to um, increase our subline for absences for teachers. Um, the 3000s, the only thing that is um, of significant change is the other student activities line, which decreased due to trend expense for cafeteria lunch duty. So we did a historical data to see where we have been for the last couple of years, and we noticed that we had a little more money than what we're expending, so we decreased it. Mm -hmm. The 4,000 salary um, for operational, the maintenance of building line increased due to anticipated summer projects, and this is for our um, personnel that will work during the summer um, if they need overtime or anything to get uh, things done on the campus. Mm -hmm. The next slide, this is our non-salary expense accounts which equates to uh, 12,787,242. Um, the only difference here, in addition to the functionalities that I've already mentioned, um, we've included 5,000, um, which is your fixed cost, um, oh, sorry, and uh, 
7,000 for capital and 8,000 for debt. Welcome, Anne. We're going through this packet and we're like, I don't know, about five or six pages, I don't know, maybe more than that, eight pages in. Is that it? Perfect. That's yep. it. There you oh, go. Right there. <laughs> when I'm here, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> so I, my apologies. My it's all right. Apologies, everyone. So I will do the same. I will just run through any major changes um, for the functionality codes uh, one through not, uh, seven or uh, eight. So for the 1,000 expense, um, the superintendent line increase due to public relations services, professional development um, conferences, and mileage related expenses. The business office line had um, increased due to outside audit services and software services, so these are your normal increases every year. Um, the legal services line increased due to anticipated expected growth in legal needs for the school district, especially because we're still in negotiations, so that is a lot of um, time with our attorneys. And last, yeah. last is our um, the district technology line increase due to district software and contractual services, um, hardware repairs, and quick share presentation devices. The next is our major instructional of the 2000 series. And there's um, just a few on the next page of um, items that have increased. The department heads line increased due to admissions, uh, public relations, advisement, I mean advertisement, which includes open house, showcase, and acceptance reception. Again, we did a historical trend to see how much they're spending, and they were definitely underfunded for at least four years, so we beefed up um, that line. The non-instructional building technology line increased due to software um, and contractual services, such as PowerSchool, Family ID, and Mosaic. The distance learning line increased um, due to software contractual services for ICAR testing, CCAR, SP2, safety test, and uh, five-day wrap testing. Text and instructional materials increased Due to the purchase of textbooks, they are purchasing grade 9 and 10, the Americans, and um, textbooks and curriculum for automotive tech, computer, cosmetology, criminal justice, drafting, early ed, health assisting, and metal fab. Other instructional materials line increased due to purchase of supplies for all programs and academic classrooms. Instructional equipment line was a decrease due to need. The instructional technology increase for the class of 2028, they are purchasing 300 Chromebooks and licensing. We need it for Chromebook parts, replacement computers as needed, replace aging MacBook Pro, and drafting. And the last is instructional hardware line, which was a decrease due to the uh, Oh, sure. Question yes. here. Um, how long was it since you had um, changed your, your um, curriculum textbooks? We, we keep up with them like every 10 years every because of the ask. 10? Yeah. Seems like a long time. I don't know what we do, but. Especially for the academics. It might be more frequent depending on our vocational right. programs because okay. they may have new certifications that come out, industry standards that we have to recognize and all that stuff. And a lot of it's e-books too. Mm -hmm. It's not just the hard book. It could be on the uh, okay. phone. Just curious. I, I, I didn't remember seeing them. Last year, probably was we have there. Last coming up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So for the three thousand expense, our transportation line increased. Um, sorry, for our contractual increases for services, um, we're in the second year of a three-year contract. Our athletics line increase is due to additional costs for um, coach buses for games, ice time rentals, HUDL programs, and police details and the service um, student activities increased due to Skills USA. And that was um, underfunded for a few years as well. The 4,000 expense series, our custodial service line is increasing due to rising costs for supplies and trend spending. Utility services, um, of course, for energy costs for electricity and gas. We are in a two-year or three-year contract with them as well. Maintenance of grounds increased Supplies due to supply chain shortages and high fuel prices, as everybody is experiencing. <laughs> our maintenance of building line is increasing due to our hazardous waste. 
supplies for building, replacement of student desks, because this wasn't included in our renovation project, anticipated special projects including we'd like to put a permanent shade outside for the early education program, and um, add additional safety showers in our auto body, metal fab, and carpentry shops. Maintenance of security system line increase due to um, services for Raptor and the NVR license. The equipment line for maintenance increased just due to aging equipment and supply increase. And our network infrastructure is due to um, increases for Microsoft, Cogen, AT&T, antivirus, digital personal uh, licensing. Our 5,000 expense, our employment retirement line, which is our match um, for Periac, the FY25 schedule, so that was an increase. Our insurance programs for active and retired employees is increasing. It increases every year. We are with the GIC. Uh, we just got walked with a 12% increase. Yes. Yeah. 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 In terms of yeah. Okay. In terms of employee retirement, I mean, your teachers aren't covered by the uh, by the state retirement program. They are. The, the teachers are, but this the is teachers all non teachers. Okay. All yes. non teachers yes. okay. are not. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Other non-employee insurance line due to estimated cost for building, vehicle, and liability. We're going out to bid for that for our building insurance and auto and liability. So we're hoping that'll be under 12. And our debt service bans line decreased because we just sold our last short-term bond in November. So we do not need that money to get any short-term property. And last is the seven and eight thousand series. So the seven thousand series is the um, building line, which is increasing due to stabilization trust fund. Now this is not um, paid by you. We're using our E and D to fund this. We would like to do our front entrance paving. It's cracking, um, needs to be replaced, and our cafeteria flooring um, in our kitchen is just a disaster. We would like to uh, replace that. Improvement of equipment line increase due to purchase of teachers' desks and chairs. Again, just like we needed the student desks. Capital motor vehicle lines decreased because we are hopeful that we are purchasing a 14 passenger multi-function activity bus this year. Okay. So thus, we're taking it out of, we reduced it. And last, the long-term debt principal and interest line increased due to that short-term ban sale. Now let's shift our focus to how assessment calculations are formulated. Regional school districts are given two methodologies for calculating assessments. Lou Hills uses the statutory method of assessment, which is the members required local contribution determined by DESI, plus transportation, capital debt, and all other expenditures not included in the regional's net school spending pursuant to the regional agreement. So as you know, Chapter 7 and Formula 8 is to ensure that every district has sufficient resources to meet its foundation budget spending through an equitable contribution of local property taxes and state aid. So there are 13 enrollment categories and demographic groups that make up the district's enrollment numbers such as low income, ELL, and special education. There are also 11 different spending categories such as teacher salary, building um, maintenance, and professional development. October 1's enrollment number is multiplied by the pupil allocation, which is, we are the high school, equals the district's foundation budget. DESE determines a member's required local contribution using figures from the local property effort and local income effort. So for 25, the property percentage is 0 0.3902, and the income percentage is 1.4299. So the sum of these figures equals your local minimum contribution. So as shown on this slide, Norwood's contribution is $1,662,938, which reflects an increase over FY24 of 26637 This slide is just a summary of Chapter 70. So this is your FY24. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sure. FY24 over 25. So Chapter 70 bridges the gap between the required minimum contribution and the foundation budget. So our total enrollment for FY25 has increased by three students, so we have a total of 928, and our foundation budget grew by 2.25%. However, the budget rates 
for inflation increased only 1.35% compared to the 4.50 in FY24. So our current inflation for services and supplies exceeds 8% as everybody is seeing that across the Commonwealth everywhere, necessitating additional coverage by the district. So additionally, our minimum aid per pupil decreased from $60 to $30 for FY25, resulting in a reduction of $27,840. That's something that like, the legislature is still talking about, right? The governor's budget said they're going with $30, yeah. but when yeah. the, the House budget House. comes out, it's possible that it will change. Correct. Yeah. If those numbers change... Then we will reduce... Whatever this is that how that works? It's, yeah. Uh the park will come out with, but because of the time restraint, we had to go with some numbers. Right, and we always use the government's budget too to start. Right. I was just yeah. curious yeah. since we're talking about sure. that yes. particular yeah. item. Yeah. yeah. And then traditionally the Senate goes second. The Senate will because they go second, they get a little later look of their financial and they will probably will add more money into the budget traditionally so then we will deal with the conference committee right okay thanks you're welcome so just i just wanted to indicate on this slide that the five-year trend the local contributions has risen moderately However, in FY23, the district experienced an increase of enrollment of over 33 students, and this has consequently boosted the foundation budget. So if you see it, there's like a blip, and then it just kind of stays. Correct. Do you have a maximum number of students or a suggested uh, student limit? So NESDEC says that we can hold uh, 1,200 students, but mm -hmm. it... It would be really difficult it to have, do that. We'd have to. It'd have a, a lot of kids in every yes. classroom. Squashed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. So we try. Okay. We're trying to stay around yeah. nine hundred and thirty and no more. Okay. So back, as back to our budget worksheet. Mm -hmm. Yes. So back to the budget worksheet that I had shown previously. The top section outlines our budget expenditures, which include our operating budget stabilization and OPEP fund and MSBA renovation capital debt totaling the 26581424 I should mention that the district is looking at establishing an OPEP trust fund. Um, we currently do not have one. We are having a meeting next week with our treasurer and two potential companies. So we are looking to establish one because we know how important it is. In case anything, God forbid, anything happens, it wouldn't be on the backs of the towns. So we are looking into that, and we're trying to moderately put a little money in there, at least 50000 earmarked once we open it. Mm -hmm. To balance the budget, we'll utilize revenues from various sources, starting with the state funding, E&D, which essentially is free cash, members' assessment, and capital debt service. It's crucial to highlight that our transportation reimbursement is estimated at 80%, a decrease from last year, which was uh, this year, which is 95% which results in a um, reduction of 146000 So we're hopeful that when the budget goes through to the next round that they will increase that. Desi's hopeful that they will, but for right now it's, at, it's set at 80%. So I can run through this just to, if you'd like, the worksheet. So for the state funding, you'll see that the Chapter 70 amount is there. Our budgeted transportation aid is the $782,073, which brings it to $8,248,466. We are also using our E&D to balance the budget, so we're taking $350,000 from our E&D fund to help balance the budget. Next are the regional member assessments, so it's your required contribution that's um, defined from DESI, which is the 13167924 for all our member towns. And then the assessed over um, what the amount was required from DESI for the 2.3 million, totaling 15503741. This equals the operating budget of 24102207. That's what we are working with for our operating budget. Underneath, this is where I talked about the stabilization, where taking money and putting it into our capital stabilization fund that we established in 2019. And then you'll see the OPEP where we're earmarking 50,000 for that. 
And then you'll see your capital debt service assessments. The principal is 810,000 and the interest is the 1.4 million, totaling 2.279, 217. This brings the total budget of 26,581,424. And then there are seven member towns that participate in the school to careers assessment. And we've level funded that program because we are looking to explore um, different options for that program. So we left it at the um, 157,054. So the grand total is 26,738,478. So what is the school to careers assessment? The, the one. Oh, each town that participates it, it has a different assessment. I'd have to look yeah. it up. One of them is $15,000. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were asking what the program was. Well, I was. Oh. I was asking what the program was. Oh, sorry. 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 Oh, the program is a person um, that works for Blue Hills and goes out to all the different schools and provides career um, programs and events mm -hmm. and with middle schools and high okay. schools. Um, you can see it all over our website. He takes them to the Army Corps of Engineers as an example in the spring. Different, different liaisons at different schools will sign up for different programs based on what the students or the teachers in that district want. Yeah. So there's a variety. Like, it's a, there's a variety of stuff. It's okay. good stuff. <laughs> Sounds good. So the next slide is the municipal assessment rationale. So we have five factors. One, of course, is the MSBA renovation project debt service. Enrollment changes at Blue Hills from year to year on October 1. Changes in the school's operating budget, our E&D fund allocation, and last, our foundation budget and minimum required contribution calculations. So the next page is the, well, is the um, municipal assessments for all nine towns. Norwood is um, at the bottom. You can see your, uh, your enrollment stays the same at 108 students. Your uh, required contribution from DESE, the 1662938. Your additional operating budget assessment was 271,841. And the renovation, we do a um, average over four years and that gets changed every, every year. And this is what we project the amount of the capital. So last year, I believe it was 10.69, 10 I believe. It's now 11.34. And the renovation assessment was 258,410. You are participating in the schools to career, so that's the 27,970 for an increase of 2 million, 200, I mean, a, a total assessment, I'm sorry, not an increase of 2 yeah. point million, oh boy, 2 million, 221,159. Last year it was 2 million, 72,784. So this increase is 148,375. And I will note that last year, I think it was in FY23, uh, we did, there was a turn back in assessments for FY23 um, of 44,972.10. Okay. If there's a turn back in assessments, does that basically come out in free cash for us? <coughs> yeah, okay. So the next two slides are just some historical data we pulled for Norwood. Your average enrollment over five years is 99 students, with 67% accepted over a four-year period. 46.3% actually enroll at Blue Hills. The hey, you know, I, I noticed, I guess, starting with the COVID years, that there was an increase in Norwood. Uh, did you generally see an increase in uh, applications throughout the district during yes. that period? Yeah. And it, we have a huge wait list right now. It's a problem, but it, it's a problem. It is what it is, yeah. We wish we could take everyone, but you know, the forefathers started these regional agreements, so we try to find a balance between mm -hmm. us and, right. and all the towns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. The next slide is a seven year assessment change year to year. So for seven years, the increase has been $1,162,350, with a pupil cost for FY25 at $18,427. And the district's average is 19606 and that concludes our budget presentation and thank you for allowing us to
to present. <laughs> you can answer any questions. Thank you very much for joining us. Does the commission have any questions that we didn't ask on the way? It's <laughs> <laughs> very clear. Thanks for all the yes. explanations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. See you, Kevin. See you, town, <laughs> see you town meeting. I will. And the next time you see the moderator, tell the light said hi. I'll say hi. I'll see you. Will do. And remind her that unlike her husband, I try to listen to the moderator. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Colin. Have a great day. So, Brian, And on that note, the table? why don't you guys come join us? Thank you very much. I had to go to the bullpen tonight. Mr. Riccardi's under the weather. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. So. Well, thank you for joining us. Oh, we very much pleasure. appreciate it. Thank you. Um, okay, so we have a um, copy of your budget here. Um, is there anything in particular we should know before we start to talk about this? I don't think so. Mary, you got anything yet? I don't know what kind of questions you have on it because a lot of it was worked out. Um, Mike had a lot to do with it, Mike Bozen and uh, John. And John kept asking me questions on what we needed and stuff like that, so we just went back and forth. Yeah, okay, great. Well, I guess one question I have is just, you know, you feel comfortable with your utility costs, you know, given the increases we've seen? <coughs> Well, yeah. on our budget, we're not like the schools that, you, because it's all lumped together. Yeah. We can use monies from other accounts yeah. if we need to. Okay. So. You feel so you you feel comfortable. I know they're gonna go up, but <coughs> with the bottom line. Yeah. Okay. Um. There's numbers in here for uh, salary increases, step and cola, and things like that. Are there contracts that still need to be settled? Yes. Okay. Both. How, how many contracts do you guys have? Well, the contracts have been merged into one. Um, okay. That process took place. So we have um, the senior custodians, which is there are 11 of those that are in school buildings. That's one contract. And then the other contract, which was three or four that was combined um, through that process, is the building custodians in this building, the library, police and fire, all the schools, and those are the junior custodians, and there are senior custodians also, and it's a little bit confusing. Uh, the uh, the oh. gentlemen that work in, and lady in this mm -hmm. building, they work the day shift, um, and then they have the people that come in to work the night shift, so. But they're in that one facilities uh, contract. Okay. So there is two. And the craftsmen, um, the facilities oh. craftsmen are in that, that contract also. Okay, so these numbers reflect you know, like an allowance for, for those contracts? I believe they do, yeah. Good. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. yeah I think the accounting staff put that together and then there was a percentage that was assumed in there. So. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. If I look at the maintenance of buildings, it's, I guess I'm just confused by that number because um, there was a large increase from 23 to 24. So. 23, we, we were still just buildings and grounds. Okay, so and that's when the money all the all went in the okay. 24th cycle from all the different buildings. Okay. Yeah. So you really can't compare 23 and 24 at all. Yep, that's, that, made, that makes like, it much easier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm curious with the uh, snow and ice. Now I know with the general government snow and ice budget, you generally have to increase it a little bit every year to be able to uh, um, go over, you know, um, you know, without having to go back to town meeting. Yours was down a little bit. We I mean, that's it, not a problem. We we moved to tw that twenty thousand negative up into the labor line because they were paying it all out of the expense line before. It was never separate. Okay. So um, I brought that up in here. So it's actually so, not down, it's equal. Right. It's even. It's even. No increase. Yeah. yeah, it's no increase. Okay. 
Okay, so some of this is, so it wasn't really reduced to reflect his actual historic expenditures. It's that some snow and ice has been moved to um, salary lines. So, right. Okay, excuse me. Yeah. I think that's important to note because we do want to maintain that flexibility that we can overspend if necessary. Yeah. Although maybe next winter will be like this winter and it won't be an issue. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, of, course it could, of course it could be the winter of 2014-15. Mm -hmm. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. It's prefer not to think about that. <laughs> I, uh, <clears throat> I actually was stranded uh, because of the snowstorm. I had to spend some extra time at Fort Lauderdale, which I know is difficult. Oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, feel sorry for me. <laughs> <laughs> On grounds keeping supplies, which is 985, it says reduced to reflect actual historic expenditures, but that doesn't it, line it's up. It's because we created um, the other maintenance of ground line items because now we're having landscaping companies do it because all our guys are fixing that in the buildings and we don't have the manpower to do the landscaping too. Okay. So they basically kind of switched it. Most of the monies went into the other. Okay. Line. Um, so we're looking at increases for um, like expenses for boilers and things like that. Um, I certainly know we have aging buildings. Um, is there anything we're particularly concerned about? Well, uh, as I said the other night when we were at the selectmen's meeting, um, we are trying to limp across the finish line at the Coakley, and it's throwing <laughs> all kinds of off. She's not cooperating right now, so mm -hmm. we're having some issues with um, the freezer, the walk-in freezer unit there that we keep oh. um, going after and trying to um, put bigger band-aids on and more bailing mm -hmm. wire. We're getting it together. If we do have to, um, we spent some time up there with uh, our HVAC technician um, and went to a couple of the other buildings that we have uh, with walk-in freezers. If we have to replace the compressor, which we might have to to get through another year, we're going to get one that we can use in one of the other buildings. And then when we're done there, we'll take it off the roof, mm -hmm. um, you know, clean it all out and put it in storage until we can use it again. So we hate to have to do that, but if we do, at least we can use it somewhere else. But, yeah, that sounds like okay. a great plan. Other yeah. than that, um, you know, um, we do all the preventive maintenance on all of them and um, forever changing belts and filters and this and that. So um, everything. Some of the older ones run better than the newer ones, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. yeah, but be um, surprised. Yeah, this yeah. building is a concern. I'm, I know you've heard stories with it's the piping downstairs, underneath, and the crawl space with steam buildings. Typically, the water yeah. sits in different areas and never moves because it's just the air that's and and it rots from the inside out, and you don't know until it's, it's leaking. Burst, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know there's you know been talk about doing some significant amount of work you know, on this building in the future. Um, has any study been done or is there something planned so you know what you have to do? Yeah, well nothing in our time, in the four years that we've been yeah. you know, approaching four years, a study has not been done. I know that um, being on board here, I can barely fit through the being big has its advantages sometimes <laughs> into the spot to go down there. Yeah. but. Um, there's water down there, there's running water in the ground under the air in spots with its little brooks. And mm -hmm. um, We did, I'm going to guess, this winter alone, 10, 11 patches. We put actually these big six inch stainless steel clamps with rubber gaskets on them, with bolts on them that clamp, and we clamp the steam pipes with those. Mm -hmm. So if there's a leak here, we clamp it six inches on either, three inches on either side of the hole. And they mm -hmm. hold up, but there's probably close to 100 of them downstairs now. Please. So eventually, last year we went in at the end of the heating season, drained the system, and replaced 50 or 60 feet of pipe. We actually cut piping out, and our guys crawled around in there. It's not nice down here at all. It's dusty, yeah. it's wet, yeah. and it's yeah. low, and then it's high. And it's I mean, it's probably about time. But it's time for study. Time Mr. to do Slater, something. Absolutely. Yeah, I think <laughs> absolutely. some things you talk to Paul about. Yeah, you know, yep. we'll we've see. had off-the-cuff discussions, and perhaps when... Um, uh, FM Global gets back into their building that far away. Mm -hmm. um, we could have a plan that maybe we could take over the buildings that they're in occupying now, the old analog. And the best way to do this building, in my opinion, anyways, being around it for as long, is to empty it out yeah. and do it right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. unfortunately, you know, the talk of that is 
a lot of money. Yeah, I know that, but I mean, you know, it's good you have the study so that oh, at, least, at least you know what you have to do. What we're up against. Correct. What you're up against, as opposed to just going in and, oops, you know, we you found something yeah. else. You this know. is not an approach that you can't, yeah. it's, it's an, yeah. an all or nothing. You really yeah. have to do it right. This is a beautiful building. Yeah. It's beautiful. And it should be taken spend more money? Is that what I'm hearing here? Well, I mean, I didn't. Did, Only for certain things. <laughs> yeah. And well, if they have his picture up. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to spend more money, not just on a study of town hall, but all our town municipally buildings. owned yeah. buildings, and and like really think yeah. about. First of all, what are the needs, and also, you know, what are the uses? Are there things that we could, you know, shift around a little bit over time, not immediately, but. You know, we just like, finished up a roof study on all the buildings. Yeah. Yes. All the time yeah. So I don't know if Mr. Kyle DePaul will get a copy of that out to you guys. I think the final copies of that just came, and they're going to fine tune those a little bit more now and put it on a worksheet we were talking about the other night um, so that you can see what buildings. And they do have more new product yeah. out there now that's state of the art that will save us a lot of money. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I mean, I, I know this year we should have a lot of free cash. Um, well, next year I should say in the budget we'll have a lot of free cash. I you know there's ten different ways to fund that, right? Mm -hmm. You know, but it would be nice if we could put a piece of that away for some of these municipal buildings that we know we have to do. Agreed. Well, I think it's, it's great for a roof study, but I think looking at the buildings that you know, it's great to repair the roof, but what are we using all the buildings in town for? I think is an mm -hmm. important piece of this. As well. Yeah. Not, so, say don't not that that has to go in the facilities budget. No, 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 <laughs> that would yeah. be a whole separate I, thing. I know there's a study that's out there that was done. Um, um, we're just waiting for the returns on that from uh, Gina for the library. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's probably going to be um, uh, substantial. I know there was money put aside for painting. And when we went up there to look at that when we first started yeah. in 2020, the, the walls were all spalling and chipped off. And you can't paint it. you got to fix the leaks with the right. water coming in and creating that before you right. repair yeah. that, to, that which yeah. goes back to the roof and the... Mm -hmm. And the fixing the yeah. outside, but yeah. you know, the civic job is going to be starting up. We got uh, emails yesterday and today that they're going to be putting the staging up over there next week and the week after. So that's exciting. That job's yeah. going to yeah. be kicked off and starting. The police and fire job is rolling along. I heard you say, Mr. Slater, I was up there walking through the Copley today with um, the electrician Paul Campbell, our, our electrician, and the contrast. Looking at the classrooms and some of the areas where the smart boards are going to be, it's exciting. Yeah, I was. Uh, is, it's uh, unbelievable. Yeah, we probably passed each other uh, because I was there with the with the crew, you know, going through. And uh, what a difference, you know. It's unreal. Yeah, it's going to be. It's really going to be a nice building. It's super so, exciting. And they're moving so fast. It's yeah. great. Yeah. So we're going to go back up there with some of the uh, other town departments. We're going to go up there with members of the DPW uh, Water and Sewer Group and show them where all the mains are coming in and see they can see the walls all open mm -hmm. and where the rough piping is coming in through the floors and so if there's issues you know down the road yeah we'll have uh, and they're actually doing <clears throat> i'm sure you're aware of it yeah the, uh, they walk around with a gopro camera and yeah they do lifetime videos and they it's all recorded and we're going to get copies of all that yeah one so of the yeah. one of the nice things they're doing there is they you know they're doing infiltration basins for all the storm water on the site not just the building, but you know the grounds itself, you know, which is going to certainly, uh, you know, relieve some of the pressure on our right. own system, and that's, I mean, that's the way to do it. Right. Yeah, it's going to be nice. It's very exciting. Are there other questions about this budget? So overall, it's just a 3.9 percent increase, 3.09 percent mm -hmm. increase. Okay. Your staff's doing, your staff really hasn't grown since. It has not. It has You're not. doing a lot of. Um, We're doing projects. a lot of work. The staff is, is incredible. It really is. It's uh, the guys will start with Cindy and Mary in the office and go through the, the crew that we have. We have um, eight guys, seven and three quarter guys. Um, Mike works is a part time that works with us. Yeah, he's a retired uh, gentleman that. Worked in, in the heating system. He was a he owned his own company, heating company. Mm -hmm. So we have him in, and he's just he's been, been great. But we have the eight guys, and uh, they just keep going at it every day. They do a great mm -hmm. job. That's good. They really do. So it's all good. Yeah, I mean, I think um, you know the the thoughts of starting the uh, facilities department a few years ago. You know, efficiency, saving money, etc. I mean, it's been borne out. You know, one hundred percent. So mm -hmm. nice to hear. Yeah. You know, 
saved on the capital side too as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Preventive maintenance is mm -hmm. a big deal, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's also offloaded things from like the librarian and the, you yeah. know, public like safety. public safety, right. Yeah, I remember having a conversation with one of the librarians and, um, about, about all of the knowledge that had to be accumulated. Yeah. <laughs> and that she really yeah. didn't want to have right. to deal with. It. Right, right. They don't teach that stuff in library no. school. No, yeah. they don't. <laughs> they don't. I do like to spend money, by the way, when it comes to infrastructure, oh, because <laughs> that's something that's absolutely necessary. Well, and I think it's about protecting our assets yeah. is what it's really about. Yeah. You know, it, like you don't want to ignore the preventive maintenance. No. And, and it's just going to decrease the value of your assets. Yep, did that for too many years. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you so much Thanks. for joining Thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Yeah. Um, the only other item we have on our agenda is the, the catch-all of other topics for discussion. I wanted to take a, a moment to review some of the action items that we had talked about before. Okay. So um, one of the action items at, at our meeting with the schools was um, to ask the town manager to reach out to labor council so that to communicate with the school's labor council to try mm -hmm. and figure out that so um, i checked in with tony today he has spoken with um labor council so hopefully that conversation will happen soon okay um just, they, they are going to vote on that i think next week mm -hmm. so just meeting. one question from my side so the account was approved at fall town meeting and funded yes are we allowed to use that for fiscal 24 or was the intention to use that going forward? So we have an amount that's been paid out this year since that was approved, still in the budget. Does that get moved over to this account? What was the timing I of the plan? I think we were kind of talking about it for the following year, but I don't know exactly what the motion said. Kind of at just town opened meeting. Up. Yeah, when I talked to Tony, he said mention it to, to the FinCom to see what their, <laughs> their thought may be. I don't think it was specific when I read the motion. Yeah, I don't I, think uh, it was I either. Viewed it, as I, it was approved that night. The funds were moved over there. Right. We should uh, use yeah, it. You know, I thought, you know, again, I have to see the language of the motion, but I thought, yeah. it, I thought it was, you know, I thought it could be used for this fiscal year. Correct. That's, I'm that's not opposed to that's, that. That's what I thought it was. I too. wouldn't be opposed to that if the money is there. Let's yeah. start yeah. using yeah. the fund. That okay. was the purpose of yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, when I do the third quarter update, I'll, I'll put yeah. an update on there to say this is what we've, yeah. we're moving over to that fund. Okay. Yep. Good. Mm, great. Um, all right. If we just page through the, the minutes from last time, I just want to check and see what other action items we maybe had. Somebody can help me find out. One of them was we had asked the schools to give us some information on... Um, special education in other districts and Ms. Stewart did get back to us she didn't yet have an answer but she's working on that yeah mm -hmm. didn't look like that was gonna be an easy an easy answer to get right right but it hasn't been ignored no um, let's see. Yeah. all right we said mr. Mizuko to provide an electronic copy of the general government budget by last Friday he did Provided shared expenses by Monday, we got it. Um, yeah, the facilities budget we received. He confirmed our meeting with Blue Hills, I assume, because they showed up. Yeah. <laughs> did, uh, did we get in the water and sewer budget? So we, we have final, not. We are finalizing the discussion tomorrow. You should have it tomorrow afternoon. Good. Okay. All Thank right. You. Great. Thank you, Alan. For I knew there was something else on there yeah. on my list of things that had to be done. Yeah. Water and sewer budget. Okay. Um, and then we also agreed that we would all take a look at policies prior to the April 8th meeting, that I will work on a draft of the letter in the town meeting book prior mm -hmm. to April 8th so that we can review and discuss then. And um, Mr. Mr. Zuko will have to report back on that CFC e grant as well. Right. Possible funding sources if yes find anything. and then um, 
Mr. O'Neill will be getting us drafts of all the pieces and parts for the budget book. Yes. Wait, yes. have you seen it? Have I seen? <laughs> budget book? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm halfway there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the accounting team is going out to UMass next week for the MMAAA educational two and a half days. So and then I have the retirement. I have retirement training on Thursday. Okay. So I will get back to work on this stuff on Friday and then <laughs> the following week and hopefully have everything over to you guys. Good. Glad Excellent. You're not Thank be you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, um, I, I did attend the budget um, school department budget subcommittee meeting this afternoon. They're still working on um, aligning that the, the bottom line budget has obviously been approved and they know that, but they're still working on realigning some things within line by line. So they are busy on that. And then also, um, Mr. Wells, Matt Wells has been working on a lot of grant information detailed line by line. So today they mm -hmm. did do a, a review and ESSER, um, the ESSER grants line by line to see where, where they've been spent and how. Mm -hmm. so okay. There was some good information. Um, they were pleased that they were starting to get that information. So that's great. So we will likely see it at some point. Good. So. Now, we as a commission need to take votes on all of these budgets. Um, when do we want to do that? I don't remember exactly what we usually do for the timeline, since this is only my second time going through it. Um, um, we have to walk backwards again. <laughs> yeah. The calendar. Um, well, I mean, you know, we, we're going to have to get the budget book printed soon. Um, right. You know, so we, we meet. We meet again. When's the next time we meet? And I know we meet with the school department. On um, right, we meet with the schools on on March twenty seventh. Yeah. And then we're the meeting. other meeting we have is April eighth. I think by April eighth we have to take a formal vote on the various portions of the budget. Yeah. Yeah, because right after that we will have it all together and sent out to the printer the yeah. following week. Okay. So April 8th we vote? Yeah. Okay. I would think, yeah. Oh, yeah, it says here on the long term budget. Approved oh. fiscal year 25 budget. <laughs> yeah. Okay, hey. actually hey. says that. See, you, you didn't know what you didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, excellent. Anything else that anyone wants to bring up? All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Can I have, uh, entertain a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much.